this is Todd Luck, and this is a review of Age of Conan Valeria number no. one by Marvel Comics. So this is a brand new Conan related miniseries they just came out with. And so this stars Valeria, who is actually a character that doesn't get a lot of comics. Um, I have hundreds of Conan comics and I only own two appearances of Valeria. And I actually know very little about this character. So I'll get into why that is and some of the history with Valeria. But first of all, we want to take a look at this issue. So let's start with the cover, which is absolutely gorgeous. I love this cover. I love the outfit she's wearing. I love the pose. This cover literally sold me on buying this issue. I saw this online and I'm like, I got to try this. And so absolutely knocked it out of the ballpark on the cover. And another great thing is this is reflective of what's inside. She actually does wear this costume inside. So the cover actually matches the story. So taking a look at the interior art, this is absolutely gorgeous. It's a nice combination of detail and storytelling, the action flows. The characters have emotion. It's just really, really nice artwork. It really doesn't matter um, if this was published now or published back in the day. It just looks really good and just really hits all the bases. I would have loved this in Savage Sword back in the day or on the color titles, and it just looks really great. And it's really in keeping with the classic, you know, fantasy art style of the old comics, but while feeling fresh and I just love the way Valeria is drawn she just she and pretty much everyone here just has so much character and emotion in their faces and are just really really well designed and well rendered and I love this art it's by a Spanish artist uh, named Aniki who is a female Spanish artist and she's done quite a few different comic books she's done like Battlestar Galactica Vampirilla uh, Red Sonja uh, she's done work for DC. She's been all over the place, but is apparently very good. I don't have anything else from her, but um, I hope this is the way that the rest of this miniseries looks. Because sometimes, you know, uh, artists can start out strong and then they get sketchy, um, you know, as deadlines pop, pile up, you know, as the series goes on. But hopefully, you know, this, this, uh, the way this looks will continue. And as far as the writing goes, it lives up to the artwork. This this whole comic just had me grinning from ear to ear. I mean, it just really captures, you know, what a good Conan style story is like. There is badass moments, there's human moments, there's funny moments, and it's just a really nice mix of all of that, well paced, and I just, I really enjoyed it. I got to know who Valeria was, I got to know what her motivations were, and all that good stuff. And that's particularly important in a mini series like this because Age of Conan doesn't actually take place in the same continuity as the other Marvel Conan comics. So this is like a brand new version of Valeria. So me understanding who she is right off the bat was fantastic. And so I'm already in, I'm already invested, and I am definitely going to be getting the rest of this series. The comic is written by Meredith Finch, and if that name sounds familiar, uh, it may be because she's married to David Finch, the comic artist. Uh, Meredith has written quite a few different comics. She's written for Xenoscope, she's written for DC Comics, she wrote a uh, Xena Warrior Princess comic for Dynamite, uh, and she also has her own fantasy comic named Rose, which has a female hero in it. And I'll probably check that out. I was really impressed by what she did with Valeria. I'd like to see what she does in her own title. And so my enjoyment of this issue didn't stop with the main story. There are prose pages in the back that tell a serialized prose story of the Conan era in it. And normally these haven't been that good and I've been kind of skipping past them, but when I flipped to the back of this one, or got to the back, um, once I finished reading the main story, this is what greeted me. And I gotta tell you, I don't know what I did to deserve this, but awesome. And if you are a fan of Thothamon, this is the story you've been waiting to read. So this is actually really enjoyable 
and I'm super jazzed to get a Thalfamon uh, back up here. So I, I will just say that this is the best comic that Marvel has put out in their Conan line since they've got the license back. I was grinning ear to ear the entire time I was reading this. It's just really good. I hope that they can put out comics as good as this one <laughs> for, for Conan, because this is, this is just great. Um, looking forward to reading the rest of this series and just seeing if it can keep up my enjoyment from this first issue. And so you may be asking, who is this Valeria chick and why doesn't she get that many appearances? Uh, Valeria is a character in the Robert E. Howard story, Red Nails. And so this is a collection of the comic adaption of it. And so she is an adventurer, very much like Conan, who teams up with him for this particular story. And this is her one appearance in Robert E. Howard. However, she does appear in the Howard stories. So it is kind of interesting that the one swordswoman who was like Conan, that he wrote in his actual stories, didn't get that many comics. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is her costume, which is drawn here by Barry Winder Smith in Red Nails. And while this is very faithful to how Howard described her dressing in this particular story, the costume's just not particularly cool or inspiring. And here's a rendering of Valeria from the Conan guidebook for Marvel Comics. And as you can see, again, she's kind of dorky looking. <laughs> again, very faithful to Howard's description of her, but just not a very inspiring costume. So I was really, really glad to see the redesign because, uh, you know, that was how Howard described her dressing in that one particular story. So, you know, it's possible she may have worn some other things. So the even bigger issue is where the character appears at in the Conan timeline. Conan is actually in his late 30s when he has the adventure in Red Nails. So this is way, way later than the comic that they were writing when they started Conan the Barbarian because they were starting when he left Samaria as a youth. So it would be years and years and decades before they would ever get to Red Nails if they were just doing it chronologically. So what they did was that created kind of this hole for a warrior woman that could fight alongside Conan. So what they did was they took a Howard po poem called Red Sonia with a Y and adapted it into a character named Run Sonia with a J. <laughs> and the rest is kind of history. So uh, she eventually got a movie. She's gotten tons and tons of comics from Dynamite. She's probably more famous for her chain mall bikini, which they would eventually put her in. Uh, but Red Sonia kind of felt, filled that void of the female sword fighter who could fight alongside Conan. Uh, Valeria is also known as Valeria of the Red Brotherhood, and she is a pirate, even though in that particular story, Red Nail, she is actually uh, completely on land and stuff happened. <laughs> so, so she was kind of in between her pirating. But as far as that goes, of course, there is the character of Belit who appears in the Howard story, Queen of the Black Coast. And when Roy Thomas decided to adapt that, he spent about 40 some issues with this character, um, which are fantastic. I love Belit. But so the idea of a female pirate ended up being, you know, taken up by this character. So you already had Red Sonja as your sword fighter. You had Belit as your pirate. So, you know, the kind of archetypes that Valeria filled were already taken by more popular characters, so those tended to be the characters that got used instead of Valeria. As far as the appearances I own of Valeria, again, they're not much. So I've got Red Nails, which is the Roy Thomas and Barry Winders for Smith adaption. This is a reprint. It was originally done in black and white in Savage Tales, and I actually wouldn't recommend this particular reprint. The colors just print way too dark. The line work just doesn't come out very well. What I stumbled upon researching this video was that there is a Marvel Treasury Edition of Conan. It's Marvel Treasury Edition number four. It's got Barry Winders for Smith cover, and it actually 
reprints red nails and the coloring on that looks gorgeous i've seen scans of it online and so that is probably the version i would recommend plus it's oversized and you can see the artwork a lot bigger that way so that's probably the version i would recommend of the roy thomas barry winders or smith red nails that you can get that would be affordable and actually look really cool um, another one uh, I have is just this random issue, a Savage Sword I got for this Earl Noreen cover, and she appears as a kind of a subplot in this particular story, and it kind of tells how she meets the Red Brotherhood, and possibly how she joins the Red Brotherhood would be my assumption, but I only have one issue of it. Um, as far as her overall Marvel comic story um this the conan universe handbook is a fantastic resource for everything that they've ever done with conan i highly recommend this and this will give you a summary of what her story is in the marvel comics um, as far as actually collecting the comics unfortunately it does not list the individual issues but if you go to marvel.fandom.com, there is a entry for Valeria, and it gives you a little summary, but you can also click on something that will list her appearances. It's got about 30 of them. Now, not all of them are going to be what you would probably consider an appearance, because this is listed as an appearance, this one page in a Conan handbook. And there's also a uh, giant size Conan number one where she just appears in one panel in a dream sequence. So keep in mind, there's a few of those in there. Uh, and it's not a complete list because for instance, um, I just stumbled upon uh, Red Sonja miniseries they put out. Uh, is Red Sonja volume two from Marvel Comics and it lasted two issues. And it actually has Valeria as a child meeting Red Sonja. And presumably this is probably the Marvel Comics origin of the character and how she, you know, got her wonderlust and decided to go out and become a pirate and, you know, fight and be better than any man and all that good stuff. So as far as Valeria's appearance in other media, uh, she, of course, was used as the sidekick slash love interest for Conan in the Schwarzenegger Conan movie. Um, the, the character is very loosely based on her. There's no piracy or anything in her background that I recall. Uh, she's basically, uh, I, I call her bleed on dry land. Uh, the story arc kind of follows Queen of the Black Coast for that particular character. I'm not going to spoil anything, but um, so she's kind of a, kind of a composite character, but she was a blonde swordswoman, which is in keeping with Valeria, so that was good. Um, as far as the animated series, Conan the Adventurer, there's actually a couple of different uh, ways that she sort of appears. Uh, there is the, I believe it's called City of the Burning Skull, which is a loose adaption of Red Nails, and it's actually really cool. It actually kind of takes the elements in Red Nails and kind of moves them to get around and creates a pretty engaging story in its own right. And then there is um, a story called, I believe it's the Bro Red Brotherhood. And that actually has a pirate captain of the Red Brotherhood named Valeria. Now this Valeria is another composite character. She has red hair and there is a soldier who actually calls her a she-devil like Red Sonja. Um, she is a pirate captain of the Red Brotherhood just like Valeria was. And uh, the plot points in the episode are taken directly from the Queen of the Black Coast just with a happier ending, which honestly had me grinning from ear to ear. If, you read, if you're familiar with Queen and the Black Coast, um, let's just say I, I enjoyed seeing the pirate win. <laughs> <laughs> and there was also gonna be an adaption, not related to the animated series, but a completely new Robert E. Howard version of Red Nails that was gonna be an animated movie 
called Conan Red Nails. Unfortunately, that never happened. Whatever reason, that project got scrapped. So um, that would have been kind of cool to see what the, how they would have done Valeria in that. And Valeria is actually a very early uh, showing of a swordswoman in a pulp story, but she's not the earliest. Um, for instance, this is Fighting Man of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs, and this is part of his Barsoom series, probably best known for John Carter, who was the first hero in that series, but there were plenty of other heroes that appeared after him, and one of them was a swordswoman named Tavia, and as far as I know, Tavia has never seen the light of day as far as comics go. And that's true of a lot of the heroes, and especially female heroes, in the Mars novels. Um, they basically, in the comics, they stick to, you know, your well-known characters like John Carter and Deja Thoris in the Mars series, and characters like Tavia or Tara, who's John Carter's daughter, or my favorite is Princess Thuvia. Just, they don't use them at all, and they don't even adapt their stories. So, at least with the Howard stuff, and I, I bring this up to say, we are very fortunate that pretty much every Howard Conan story that I can think of has been adapted in comic form, and all those characters have been used. Maybe some more than others, but just be thankful we do have what we have, and we have hundreds and hundreds of Conan comics telling stories about everybody under the sun. And so what gets me excited about this miniseries, one of the things is that since this is a character that didn't get much play, but they still gave a miniseries to, um, I, I hope that if this is successful, they'll consider doing this with other characters, whether they're Conan characters or whether it's Dynamite over at Mar doing the Mars stuff or, you know, Marvel Comics looking at all its various different characters. Um, there's a lot of characters out there beyond just, you know, your mainstream, you know, the, that handful of characters that you know are going to sell. And sometimes when you take a chance on them, it pays off. And so, again, hoping for some big things out of this. All right, guys, again, very highly recommended. Love, love this issue. Uh, and I will be back once it's complete to tell you if the rest of it lived up to that first issue. But until then, I got plenty more reviews coming, plenty more videos coming. So like and subscribe. And until next time, see ya.